Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more gear nerdery this time because today we're taking a close small details look at this full titanium click action pen from a brand called Oddmog. This is the 36 click pen. We'll talk all about why it's called that. But yeah, Oddmog is a company I'd never heard of. And so when I came across this, I was really curious about this mechanism, and I was also really curious about how the quality would be, because it's a one-man shop. We'll talk about that all in a moment, too. And I don't know, I was just really in, in excited and kind of enticed. At the same time, I was a little bit nervous about just the general build quality. Would it live up to my expectations? Because I've had stuff like this. This is, you know, the tactile turn bold action pen, and this is just superbly made. And so... Ah, I was a little bit hesitant, but I'm so glad I did. In fact, I'm so impressed by this. I'm going to end up giving this away in my upcoming 2K video because I want people to hear about this guy. I want someone else to get to experience this and I want people to hear about this. And I'm just going to buy another one in, in uh, to replace it. I, it might be a while before this exact model gets released again, but he's doing other versions constantly. He does them in very small drops because it's just a one guy, like I said. And so I think the versions that are coming out next are going to have clips attached. He's been done clipped and clip versions in the past. Anyway, yeah, I'm blown away. I really want people to know about this. So. Why was this so blown away and why was this interest in the first place? Now, I've had these three titanium pens for a while. These two are bolt action pens from Tactile Turn, and this is also a bolt action pen from uh, Urban Survival Gear. This is the TieScribe Bolt V2. They also have, they're onto like the TieScribe Go version now, which pulls it up a little bit higher, or maybe just extends this down a little bit lower, and has like a push buttony feel at the top, but it's not a true push button pen. And so, the thing is, since I got these and just, I mean, in general in the last few years, a lot of other pretty well made, honestly, bolt action pens have come out of the market. For one of the things that's done is made them available at lower price points and to open them up to other people. And that's really cool because these are kind of expensive. This one, uh, these are like a hundred bucks. This was like a hundred and I don't remember, but this was actually a gift to me. And this thing I think was about 140 when I got it. But these things are a little out of, a, of the price range for a bunch of people. And so it's cool that those, those other ones have come on the market. And it's cool that a lot of them are pretty well made. But the reality is, it's, the market kind of got flooded. And, and with these in my pocket, I, I kind of felt like my, my bolt action curiosity had been sated. And it's not that I got bored of bolt action. I just didn't feel like I needed another bolt action. There are interesting differences between these, even within the tactiles, like the angle and depth of this curve right here is totally different. And so this one won't, if you, if you just push that way, it won't close. Whereas this one, absolutely will. So there's differences even in them that make you might want one more than another or like one more than another. But my, my, like my, you know, the, the way that you play with them is the same. Over here, same thing. And I love clicky mechanical gadgets. I also love just mechanical motion. And so I find these really interesting, but I felt like what I wanted out of them had already been sated by the things I needed. And I didn't feel super curious picking up another. And then I came across these two pens. This one I haven't talked about yet. And there's gonna have a very long full video of its own because this thing is kind of a mechanical marvel. There's a few things that I think it should change, but we'll talk all about that in its video. But this is called the Cam Pen by a company called Billet Spin. And this, clicking cam mechanism, I think blows the traditional bolt action pen completely out of the water. I am, this is, I love this, but like I said, it's going to get its whole own video. This though is a click mechanism. And there's been a lot of pens for a very long time that have some form of click down and then push on the side. But for me, it's my first time owning something like this. I've almost bought the tactile turn side click pen in the past, and this mechanism is very, very nice and simple. It uses a bent metal, uh, like a kind of a almost U-shaped piece of metal, and that is so that's a leaf spring in this direction. I wanted to see how this one was operating because it looked like it's operating in a different way, just based on what sticks out here. And I also just wanted to see how satisfying it was to own one of these. I, I took the the, I kind of took the leap of faith on this because I was also blown away at the price. This pen cost me, I think, $62, and the tactile turn pens are up at 100 and above. And so I wanted to, yeah, just see if, if you could possibly get as good a quality out of a little one-man shop at that price point. 
So what is that one man shop? Otmog. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I have no idea what that word means. A-U-T-M-O-G. It's an odd combination of letters. Maybe Brian will tell me. But anyway, that is the, the business name of a man named Brian Howie. He is up in Vancouver, British Columbia. That's in Canada for if you don't know. And he's been uh, in the machining kind of space in various jobs in the Vancouver area for about two decades now. He started making pens in 2019 and he ran his first of six successful Kickstarter campaigns. The original one was for a much thicker and shorter pen that he that also had like a kind of a just a machine straight off the machine polish finish. Do I have anything that would be representative of that? I don't know, just like a straight machine type finish. And so he appropriately called that, and it's literally called this, the shiny stubby fat pen. And I I love that name. And that that was part of the things I was learning when I was learning about this guy. And I just immediately was like, okay, I like this guy's sense of humor. And that was a four and a half inch pen that was just shy of half an inch thick. And so it was appropriately, it was, it was a shiny stubby fat pen. This on the other hand is something very different. This is the 36 click pen, and man, has he come a long way in that time. The amount of just refinement in the machining here has really, really changed. If you if you look back at his original Kickstarter pictures, it's not that they were bad, they just were, I mean, yeah, I mean, less refined. He, he rephrases it that way in himself, in his own writing. And so I don't think I'm bad saying that. I think these things have come a long way, but also he's just come a long way in kind of the general design and aesthetic. This is the 36 pen because it is 0.36 inches. And it's worth noting that he offers a lot of different thicknesses. You can find pens in 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 0.3, no, I don't know about 0 0.37, 0 0.36, 0 0.38, uh, 0 0.4, 0.4, Six, I think he, I think um, he, the original fatty one that he did, this, this shiny stubby fat pen, that I believe was 0.47. And he even offers a modern day version of that where he's refined all that. That one also had a twist mechanism that just relied on the gears, uh, spring tension, and I think a O-ring to keep kind of tension. This is a full click mechanism. So we're going to take this all apart sort of, and look at how this works and generally look at how he's finishing all this because one of the things that really blows away is the the, the actual milling itself or lathing. I don't really know what you're already used to that. I guess lathing because man, it feels so freaking good. Okay, so this thing, to talk about the uh, the general size and, and weight of this, let's actually get all the other ones out and compare them side by side. Okay, here is our lineup. On the left, we've got the tactile turn bolt action pen in its shortest and slimmest variety. Then we've got the 36 click pen from Otmog, the cam pen from Billet Spin, the tie scribe bolt V2 from Urban Survival Gear, and then finally the tactile turn bolt action in the thickest and tallest variety. These are arranged right now by length and this just so happens that tactile is on the both ends of this. This is the book end of both. This, like I said, is their shortest, and this is their tallest. This they call their standard, and this they call their mini. They do make a middle ground they call the short, which would fall right about here at 5.1 inches. What we have going on here is 4.3 inches, and then these two are basically tied. This one is technically a little bit taller than that, but I put it below because the top can compress in. These are both 5.2 roughly. We then jump up to 5.36, and then finally 5.55. If we arrange these by thickness, it's a different story. We again have two that are basically tied. These are both billed at 0.36 inches, and that's why this is called the 36 pen. He has other pens that have different numbers at the beginning, and that's again the diameter. Um, this one is technically a hair thinner. It is 5 thousandths thinner than this, but they are to the naked eye, interchangeable. Well, here we have almost exactly 0.4, just a, a tiny bit under, one thou under. And then we've got 0.41, and then we've got 0.43. And so what this looks like is basically, these are down here, there's a 0.4 gap, and then there's a 0.3 gap. And so this is kind of the perfect middle ground. And so I personally think this one is a Goldilocks thickness at sitting there at a basically exactly 0.4. The, the cam pen sits a third of the way between those. And so it's going to be a matter of, do you like a thicker pen? Do you like a middle ground pen? Or do you like a slimmer pen? And those are kind of your three camps. If we arrange these by weight, it's a different story again.
It is not surprising that this one here is the lightest because it is the shortest, but it does have this full milled clip right here, and this is 0.67 ounces. We're only going up a little bit to get all this extra length in 0.74, or roughly three quarters of an ounce. And the reason we're able to pull off that lightweight is because of how slim this is and because it doesn't have a clip. He does offer versions that have clips and those will bump it up, I'm assuming, but I think it'll probably still stay in this position in the lineup. Then we go up almost exactly a quarter of an ounce to the tie scribe, which is basically exactly one ounce, just a hair under, but basically one ounce. We go up a quarter of an ounce again to 1.25 for the tactile turn. We then go up almost a full quarter of an ounce to 1.45 at the cam pen. So it's, it's interesting to see this all the way over here because it was tied with this one for length. So these are the two shortest, but this is the heaviest. And it is literally twice the weight of the Otmog. So it's going to be a matter of what your preferences are, both in terms of how much heft you want in your hand and how much uh, the thickness. I tried riding with this for a good while, and I never felt true fatigue, but it definitely does feel heavier. This one is so light, and it almost, I would say, disappears in your hand, but not in a bad way. It's light, but it's slim enough that it still has a really nice density feel to it. This one is my personal Goldilocks. I think it's just the overall weight and thickness is kind of perfect for me. But some people I've heard, actually quite a few people, say that that weight and thickness combination makes this feel a little bit hollow to them in a way that even this doesn't have, even though it is a quarter of an ounce lighter. This one up here has always felt I'd say pretty good balance if you like something a little bit on the thicker, heavier side. And like I said, this one just feels a bit heavier than the rest, but none of these are all that, that heavy. And none of them are all that thick. I think personally, I love writing with these ones and I really love writing with this one. This is a little bit thick for my preferences and I kind of really like where this one sits in the, in the thickness dimension too. Okay, so at the end of the day, what this is is a very lightweight pen. I mean, it's, it's less than three quarters. I mean, it's barely less, but it's three quarters of an ounce. And, and that puts it in that very kind of featherweight space. But because it is thin, it has a really nice density to it. It doesn't feel hollow. It doesn't feel empty. It just feels really, really good. The size, I think, is a nice middle ground. It hits, I think, in a very pleasant space on your hand. And the balance point on this, let's see if I can get that, is right there, pretty much dead center. And so as a result, the balance is sitting right about here in your hand. And so when you're resting, it doesn't feel like you have a bunch swinging around. It feels like the weight is resting right about where you'd want it to be. I love the experience of riding with this. It came with a uh, Pilot G2 in a, 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 a 0.5 millimeter. And so, but take that, take or leave that part of it out. The actual experience of holding the pen and moving it along the page, it felt great in my hand. I personally really like these thinner pens. Some people like a big thick one. And this also feels nice. And if I'm doing a very long amount of writing, sometimes this is a little bit better because your fingers just aren't quite as cramped together. But I, I don't have any problems using a thinner pen like this. And it fits in a lot of different spaces. And I really, really like that aspect of it. Another important part of what it's like to actually write with the pen has to do with how well the refill fits within the hole at the tip of the pen body itself. If it's a loose fit, then the pen refill will shift back and forth as you write. To show you what I'm talking about, I created a low res model. Now most pens aren't this bad with this much slack, but some actually are. And so what happens as you go to write, you'll see that the, the tip here actually lags behind your motion on the pen body. As you push, you have to shift the entire pen bit to the side before you start dragging. So you start moving to the right, and then it's not until you hit the other sidewall that it starts coming with you. And so you get this really kind of sloppy, laggy type writing that doesn't feel responsive. It can also mean that you don't have the pen tip go where you expect it to go, and it can actually make your letters not look right. Especially, this is especially bad if you're trying to do any kind of fine detail work or illustration or drafting or something like that. The other way you see this effect is that you go to pick the pen up and off the page and put it back down because there's actually a point where you touch the page 
and you haven't actually made side uh, contact with that sidewall yet. And so it's not until you actually make that second amount of pressure that you are now able to move the pen tip. And then as you release, it does the exact same thing in reverse. First you lift off and it pulls off of the sidewall and then it pulls up off of the page. And so you can get these kind of false starts and stops and the tip you can see on the end of your letters, it'll just kind of like wiggle off to the side a little bit. And it just looks really, really bad. Now on high-end pens, a lot of them do a pretty good job, but this does one of the best jobs I've ever seen. This is effectively completely locked in. There is the most imperceptible little bit of a wiggle right there. And this is something that because he's the type of person that is constantly always improving with each new small batch, he says that he's refined this even more and made it so there is absolutely no perceptible wiggle. Previously, my tactile turn pens had done the best job at this, specifically this big one. This one has almost no wiggle, but definitely more. This one here has a little bit of wiggle, not bad, you can hear it. The cam pen has probably the most of any of the ones, but this is still not bad, but it has a little bit of wiggle right there. And the tie scribe has, eh, I'd say probably pretty similar to the cam pen. This one though is the best of any I've ever experienced. I, it's, it's practically completely solid. And as a result, you, you can get really fine, precise motions if you're trying to draw. Now in that same direction, he offers versions of this with a different nose. This is what he calls his round nose, but he offers versions with what he calls a step nose, where instead of a smooth linear slope down, it's a steep slope and then a, a, a flat line. I guess this isn't linear. That one is linear. That more precise tip pulls the amount of metal here inward. And it all, and so it gives you better visibility into where the tip is going at different angles. And so those types of tips are often things you can find on like drafting pens. I think both look really, really nice. And I, I can't believe just how well he's able to hit the very, very tight clearances. One of the things about it is this grip. So a lot of pens you'll find have something along the lines of this. So they have some kind of texture at the bottom. We have the same thing over here. They did a cool version where it's actually changing as it goes. We'll talk about that in that video. But these pens are kind of modeled after the tactile style. If you look at this, tactile turns claim to fame. What makes it a tactile turn is, well, it's been a turned pen because it's lathed, but then it has this ribbing. And this is pretty iconic, famous ribbing. And my under, my under like my, I, I took this under my microscope and tried my best to measure this, the, the distance here. And I'm pretty confident that the ribbing on here is about 10 thou apart. Now, that's the kind of thing where at, you know, to your regular eyes, you can clearly see the ribbing. But if you take it far away, it kind of vanishes. That ribbing also allows them to hide that seam. Isn't that cool? But it means that the ribbing gives you pretty darn good texture, but maybe sometimes a little bit too much texture. I personally think it feels nice, but it does wear a little bit. And it also wears on your pocket as you pull it in out of your pocket. And some people find that this is just a bit too much. That's where this comes in because my God, this feels amazing. This also has a micro ribbing texture, but it's even smaller. Let me zoom in. Yeah. So my, uh, my best attempt to measure this, peg this at exactly half. I believe this is, I believe this is 5,000 spacing. And the result is that you honestly can only kind of make out that it is ribbed with your eyes. Maybe your eyes are better than mine, but it kind of just has a, like a, a sort of very slight lined texture. It doesn't really look ribbed. When you feel it though, that's where it comes in. You can definitely pull your finger over this. But if you just glide your fingers over this, it, it's close enough together that it feels smooth. It doesn't feel ribbed the same way that these do. These feel ribbed. But that ribbing gives you excellent traction as you go. When you put actual pressure on this, it locks you in. This feels more like a fingerprint than this. This feels like ribbed. And this, like I said, it feels like the same kind of spacing as your actual fingerprint and it just kind of grips. I love this. This is honestly my favorite texture of any pen so far. I, I like it significantly more than the tactile turn even because it has the same effect, but it just kind of vanishes when you don't want it. And man, it works so well. Now you might wonder, is he hiding anything here? But no, the reality is this is a single unibody piece here. And so there is no seam whatsoever. 
Now, on the tactile turns, that seam is because you could take off this end cap in order to get access to the pen refill. This cap comes off on the back too, but that's not something you really normally would take off unless you're trying to take out the bolt mechanism. But this front part is unscrews, and there is your spring, which can flop off fairly easily, and there is your, uh, your pen refill. You'll also notice that there is a little O-ring, and that O-ring helps resist motion in this turn. There we go. And right there, catches and makes this nice and tight at the end. Now you notice I just struggled a little bit to put that on. We'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. Over here, there is nothing. So to access to the back, you come and twist this little cap. So this cap just turns like that. And there's your pen refill. One of the reasons why I like this back entry point is because the spring is all the way at the bottom. Now it's not captive. It will fall out just like the others, but it's has to tip the entire tube and fall the entire way. And so you can more easily hold this up, pick this up, take this in and out, put in a new one, and not have to worry about the spring going flying anywhere. The spring can't. You can kind of spring that though if you want. It's really easy to push this back on. You just take this, put it down, and thread it in. Now this is where I want to talk about one of the incredibly small details that this guy's doing that is just next level and a lot of folks aren't. I mentioned a moment ago, you actually saw me struggling to screw this back in. And the reason what was going on here is threads can often get out of sync with each other. When you're going to thread them back on, it's easy to accidentally tilt it one way or another and start catching that initial thread part. That's called cross threading. And what happens is this very tip that very last thread is accidentally going in and catching down a one layer deep. It's able to go in one layer deep because when it's cocked to the side like that, it's able to extend further into the tube and catch that second thread. There actually is a way to prevent this though. And it's just, it's, it's more complicated. It's a more complicated way of doing your threading. And so most people don't do it, even at the really high end like this. He's doing it here. That extra little thread thing is called a Higby thread, or sometimes it's called a ramped start thread or a false start thread. There's a bunch of different names for this, but it's right... Well, you're not going to be able to see it here. I'll throw in a picture that I took with uh, my microscope. Basically, what you're doing is making a, an intentional and very specific ramped up cutaway at the very start of the thread. What that cutaway does is prevents it from... Uh, from catching at an angle like this. In order to actually thread correctly, it has to extend in deep enough that it is aligned in this dimension, it's not cocked to one side. And so the, si the result is that it's really hard, nay, almost, I would say, I mean, impossible to accidentally cross-thread this. Uh, even when under load with the thing back in, it's really, really easy to just push this in and start turning. You don't have to, watch, I messed that up the moment I say that, Push this in and start turning. You don't have to do that kind of twist back thing in order to make sure that you're capped on. I still always encourage people to do that. Anytime you're screwing anything in, I encourage people to reverse thread until you hear a click and then go in. But you just don't really have to on this. You can kind of spin forward and eventually it will work. And that is so cool. That is a very small detail next level thing that, like I said, even at the very high end, they're not doing that. You know who does stuff like that? Grimsmo. If you look, he has an entire video on adding um, Higby threads uh, to their Grimsmo, whatever the heck they call their pen. I totally am blanking what they call their pen. But that's the kind, you know, and that's a, like a $300 pen. And so to see this guy doing that on something that was in like the, the 60s, some of these can go up to 80 or or $100, depending on what configuration, what metals you get, whether or not there's a clip, the size, the thickness, just material cost, something like that. But to see that in this lower price point is so freaking cool. Now let's talk about this mechanism itself. Now, Tactile Turn also has a cyclic pen. Theirs is um, modeled after the Mitsubishi Boxy clip. Um, that that pen, uh, they, I think there's a pencil version too, has a little, uh, another, a, a little orange block right there. And if you took it the way that mechanism actually works, it has a spring 
tension and it's working kind of as like almost a cantilever to pop that little pin out and into a hole in the side of the body. And this and the, the tactile turn version works very, very similarly. Their spring is made out of metal and it's a really cool, simple little mechanism. I adore the simplicity of it and I think that it's a really, really cool way of doing it. But the version here is actually really, really simple too. There's, I think, I guess it's, it's two pieces, but they had machine everything. This is this little ball right there. Now, one of the things about this is that it looks, in my opinion, like it belongs there. It kind of just makes sense. And whereas on a lot of pens, the, the, with a side click, the mechanism just kind of feels like an afterthought. The reason why this makes it feel like it makes sense to me is because it's sectioned away on this end cap and because it's nice and round and the roundness just kind of fits with the overall flow of the pen rather than having a little nub sticking out. That's actually one of my kind of problems with bolt action pens in general is they just kind of have a nub sticking out that doesn't follow the curve of the pen itself. It's just acting on a different plane. And since this pen itself doesn't have a cap, although he does do versions with caps, it, it changes the overall feel. Everything just kind of flows nicely here. The way this mechanism works is pretty straightforward. There is this, there is this outer collet, this tube here, and then there is this inside piston that can slide back and forth. Now inside this is a chamber that has been drilled down. A very small compression spring has been placed inside there and a ball bearing has been placed inside that. So even without any tension on that, the little spring in there will push that ball bearing out and make it so that this, this mechanism still works even taken apart. And what makes this not slide out altogether is this little tiny collar on the end around a tiny chamfer there. And so this if you, you, this is something that you never need to take apart, but if for some reason you wanted to, you would pop this off. I would say use pliers to apply pressure downward like that. You'd pop that off, slide the entire thing out, and then at that point, the ball can come out and the little spring could come out. Now, I think this works so dang well, and it's so simple too. The entire thing is comprised in this tiny little spot, and that's part of what I really love about this, is the entire mechanism is so small and compact, and the entire thing can just live at the end. Now, could he... Could he make this mechanism invisible? Could he make this uh, line up and seamlessly the way he did here? And maybe. Should he have? I don't know. I think it could look cool, but honestly, I kind of like this little cap at the end. It gives it a visual intrigue that if it was invisible, it would just look a little bit more bland. This gives a little bit more structure and style to the pen overall by having this aesthetic cap. The actual mechanism itself, if you look at how you pull this in, there's this this spot that's been cut out here. And you can see that the ramping is different on these sides compared to those sides. It's steeper on that side than it is in that. Now, I think if I just think about how this would go, I think that's a side effect of drilling in um, and then the body, because on this plane, the body is falling away. I think that's what explains the actual difference in size there, that this would be the same uh, length of curve as if it if this had been a flat surface rather than a falling away surface. Um, but the effect is it gives this really neat look of this kind of asymmetric shape right there. And this gives you just enough space to use the meat of your finger to push here and pop that back out. You can also pop it with your nail. But I find with just the meat of my finger, it gives me enough space to push that in. But it is maybe not the easiest thing because you do have to be perfectly lined up. If you're slightly off center, it can be a little bit, no, I see I'm getting it every time. Well, okay, right there. If I'm, not, I'm just slightly off center, no, still, it still worked. But this is feedback that he received. And so on the newest, newest versions, this is a very new pen, but on the newest, newest versions, he says that he has adjusted this ever so slightly to increase access even more so you can just do it with the meat of your finger instead of having to get your nail in there. But like I said, once I started using this, this became incredibly, incredibly easily, easy to do. When I first got it, I thought that was going to be my one complaint because the very first few times that I tried to press on this, I had a difficulty unlocking sometimes. And I found myself pressing off to the side slightly, but it just doesn't happen anymore. So I don't know if that's me adapting or it changing, but that's no longer an issue. Now, the one thing, the one and only complaint that I do have, let's see if it did it. 
Yeah. Okay. So I've found that I, if I just sit here and fidget with this pen, and if you're someone that doesn't fidget, then it doesn't really matter. But if, but this is a really nice action. So if, if I find that sometimes if I sit there and fidget, sometimes this becomes ever so slightly loose. Like it didn't that time. That's still perfectly tight. And the reason is because of the way that you have to grip this, I find that my hand naturally kind of twists this to the side. So this is the kind of thing, it's such a small amount and that I think you could solve this really easily with a tiny about a, amount of blue thread locker. But I do very, very much mean a tiny amount of blue thread locker because you don't have a ton of grip on this thing. However, if you do end up putting a little bit of thread locker on there and need to get it back open, you, the only time you ever need to open this is to change the refill. So it's not something you do often. Because there is this hole right here, you could actually take something like I used here in my model earlier, stick it in there, and use this for leverage to torque it to the side. So it actually wouldn't be hard to break it, but again, tiny bit of thread locker. I also think that's something that he could address with slightly tighter uh, threading, but I noticed he said that he did change the threading in his most recent version, so maybe that's something he's already fixed. This top part up here is narrower, and it actually has an even finer ribbing. I will show you a picture in an overlay, but I, I couldn't measure it. It was so small that I think it's maybe like two and a half thou or two thou. And so you can still feel the texture here, but it's even even smaller amount. And it sticks up basically exactly a quarter of an inch and then pops right down. You can see right there. Now, when I first got this, if you think about the way that this is working, that ball is being a, has spring tension pushing it upward. And so it's riding along the inside of this chamber until it can pop into place. And what that means is that that ball is riding along that spot right there. And so when I first got this, the very first few times I clicked this, like basically like any pen, anything that has metal on metal sliding, there was initially a very slight gritty feeling, but I've broken this in just by using it. It did not take long at all. And now this has a very nice smooth action. Now, how silent is this? You can hear, It definitely makes some noise as it goes. That is the sound of that metal sliding on that metal. I suspect that you could reduce the sound of that by adding some kind of lubrication there, but you kind of can't because you're pressing on that object right there and it would get all over your thumb. Can you use this silently? Well, you can. If you go slowly, it doesn't make a very loud click because really it's just that little tiny bit at the end. Do that to the mic. The loud click is on the return, but only if you press it like this. It's actually really easy to just keep your finger there, press it, and let go at your own rate. And the reason why I talk about this is sometimes clicky pens are a pain in the butt if you're around other people, if your spouse doesn't like it clicking, or if you're like in a conference room with a bunch of people or you're on the phone or something. Sometimes you want to make a more silent pen, in which case this is actually not hard at all. To just push this in and then release. But under normal circumstances, ooh, it has a really satisfying, nice, authoritative click. Ooh, it feels so good. It sounds so good. I love the way that works. So what are my final thoughts on this? Well, the incredibly short version is I am so blown away that I'm giving this away in a giveaway, like I said. I, I, I am so impressed with this that I'm willing to buy another one without hesitation just so that other people can experience this and other people hear about it. That's like some shout from the rooftops level of blown away. I, I can't get over it. The the quality of the work here, the how tight everything is, how good the, the tolerance is on everything, how like firm everything is. The clearance is down here. That's that's wild. How satisfying this is. How clean and uniform all these are and how good this grip feels. It's my favorite you know, structure, grip, uh, texture on any pen at this point. This is so incredibly cool. If this particular version without the clip won't work for you, if you need to have a clip, like I said, he has a ton of different versions that do have clips. But this, I think without the clip, since I tend to use my pens at my desk rather than um, in like my pocket, I don't actually use the clip most of the time. The one thing that the clip does uh, for me, since I don't take it on the go very often, is that it prevents it from doing this. That's what a clip provides asymmetry. But I actually haven't had this roll off my desk a single time. This, this has been so easy to use. And so if you are the type of person that he has like a little tray or something like that that you can put on, 
I don't know, it's great. It also, this is the kind of thing where like you could just slide this into the side of whatever you else keep in your pocket and it would just hold off there. You don't normally need a clip on a pen in order to put it in your pocket. Depends what kind of pocket you're doing. So like I said, I think this version just makes it stand out as something even more clean and sleek in my collection. And uh, I he, I don't know when it'll be when he'll release this version again, but I kind of actually want one of each. Like if I end up buying one of the clip versions, I think I'm going to buy yet another one when he releases these again, because this is just, it's so cool. It's so sleek. It's so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys need to check this out. Otmog, Brian Howie. This is the 36 click pen. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.